Doug Feig, and I will be our reader today. Our Palm Sunday proclamation of Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt who has never been ridden, and tie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it and will send it back immediately. They went away and found a colt to hide near the door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told him what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and they threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he, the one that comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, we too say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. After a year of weariness, we struggle to put one foot in front of the other if we manage to pull ourselves out of bed each morning. But you take us by the hand, steadfast love, as we walk through the streets of your community of grace and wonder, listening to the songbirds. After a year of endless stories of those who refuse to be cautious, who could care less about others, we try to keep our ears from being stuffed with cotton, word of hope for all, so that we might learn how to listen to the hearts which are ignored by everyone everywhere. After a year of staying in place, it is no wonder we want to run away from the days of exhaustion, the overwhelming worries, the fears that velcroed us. So model for us, peace of the weary, how to dare to bear the injustices of all those blamed by far too many for these days in which we find ourselves. Steadfast love, word of hope, spirit of peace, God in community, holy and one, hear us as we lift our prayer to you this day. Amen. Hear now our call to reconciliation. After a year of struggling to follow Jesus faithfully, we know how we have worn down others by our angry words. 
how we have wearied the loved ones with poor choices. Yet we also recognize that in every moment of every day, God has been with us with that love which never gives up, that grace which is always offered freely to us. So let us come with our prayers to God's heart so we may enter forgiveness and life anew. Let us pray together. We have been so busy last year, focused on ourselves enduring love, that we have forgotten to imagine what was on Jesus' mind in those days. We long to shout for joy on a day like this, smiling as we remember waving our palms, even as we look at our empty hands. We harden our faces, not in discipleship, but to turn away from those who are still struggling in these days. Yet, because he was fully human like us, God, whose compassion never ends, we can be more like Jesus if we dare. So as we begin our journey through another Holy Week of worshiping apart, yet strangely more together than we imagine, help us to always choose humility over hubris, weakness over strength, tenderness over bullying, and to seek to stay as faithful as we can in these days. We pray this in the name of our teacher, Jesus. Amen. Listen now to our acknowledged assurance of pardon. God dares us to think like Jesus, because God knows that if we do, we will find the strength to live through these days, to walk with others, to offer our lives in love and service to all. God hears our prayers, listens to our hearts, fills us with forgiveness, and walks with us in these moments and in all the ones to come. Thanks be to God for such incredible mercy. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose word silences the shouts of the mighty, quiet within us every voice but your own. Speak to us through the suffering and death of Jesus Christ that by the power of your Holy Spirit we may receive grace to show Christ's love in lives given to your service. Amen. Our first reading is from Psalms chapter 118. I'm reading from The Message. Thank God because he is good, because his love never quits. Tell the world, Israel, his love never quits. Swing wide the city gate, the righteous gates. I'll walk right through and thank God. This temple gate belongs to God, so the victors can enter and praise. Thank you for responding to me. You've truly become my salvation. The stone the builders discarded as flawed is now the capstone. This is God's work. We rub our eyes. We can hardly believe it. This is the very day God acted. Let's celebrate and be festive. Salvation now, God, salvation now. Oh yes, God, a free and full life. Blessed are you who enter in God's name. From God's house, we bless you. God is God. He has bathed us in light. Festoon the shrine with garlands. Hang colored banners above the altar. You're my God and I thank you. O oh my God, I lift up high your praise. Thank God, he is so good. His love never quits. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second reading comes from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. Listen for the word of the Lord. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, Wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you join your hearts with me in prayer? Holy One, we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of my favorite songs as a teenager was by Steve Green, Broken and Spilled Out. And yes, you may go ahead and laugh. I was a gospel nerd, although Husker Du and the Ramones were also my favorites. So Hey, I think I had great taste. But the lyrics to the Steve Green song go like this. One day, a plain village woman, driven by love for her Lord, recklessly poured out a valuable essence, disregarding the scorn. And once it was broken and spilled out, a fragrance filled all the room. Like a prisoner released from his shackles, like a spirit set free from the tomb, broken and spilled out, just for the love of you, Jesus, my most precious treasure lavished on thee, broken and spilled out and poured at your feet in sweet abandon, let me be spilled out and used up for thee. Lord, you were God's precious treasure, his loved and his own perfect son, sent here to show me the love of the Father, just for love it was done. And though you were perfect and holy, you gave yourself, you gave up yourself willingly. You spared no expense for my pardon. You were used up and wasted for me. Broken and spilled out, just for the love of me, Jesus, God's most precious treasure lavished on me. You were broken and spilled out and poured at my feet in sweet abandon, Lord. You were spilled out and used up for me. In sweet abandon, let me be spilled out and used up for thee. <clears throat> I took that song as an anthem of sorts. I wanted with all my heart to be spilled out for Christ. 
And though the my theology of the cross has evolved over the intervening years, I think the song still holds up. It references, it references of course, this unnamed woman who appears in several of our synoptic gospels, who poured this expensive perfume over Jesus. They tell that it is pure nard. That means it's it's an oil so concentrated it's almost uh, like uh, like like Crisco. You know, it's almost solid. Uh, it's an act of utter abandon, total commitment, and bodily devotion. And she was shamed for it, of course. Maybe because it was such a sensual act and she was a woman. And men in power always seem to have trouble with women and sensual acts. Throw in religion and we've got ourselves a party. Brows are raised, fingers are pointed, and self-righteous posturing ensues. We all know the drill. We see it still today. And here we are again. This day, when we remember the very physical worship and physical acts of abandon that are so central to our faith story. First, we have people throwing cloaks on the ground and their palm branches in the air, opening up those lungs and their throats to shout loud and joyous hosannas to the king as he arrives in his subversive donkey procession. Jesus himself toes dragging in the dust on his little donkey, probably grinning his face off as he enjoys the exuberance of the crowd. But next, though, we move on to the story of this woman, the oil and the feet of Jesus. Then a shared meal, the clink of coins in a pouch, sweating in a garden prayer and a brief sword fight. Then a mock trial, washing of hands, torture, public nakedness, more torture, and a long, slow death from suffocation. So much pouring out is going on of blood, of sweat, of tears of spittle from the shouts of the crowd, crucify him, and from the guards mocking Jesus, spitting on him. There are sore bodies, cracked knuckles, a missing ear, a new dawn betrayal, the smell of fires, dust, chickens scratching and crowing. This story engages all of our senses and is truly lived in human bodies. In fact, the very human embodiment of the story is what gives it its power. The Son of God, creator of the universe, is a person like us. He has toenails that somehow he has to trim, imagine that. All of those fluids and marks and pains, a body that dies and is buried. So of course Jesus understood the gift of the unnamed woman and the love with which she offered it. What can we give to one who is poured out like this? But everything. We see even now human bodies broken and poured out. 
most these days are broken not of their own choice. Bodies broken and blood spilled because of their race, because of their gender identity, because they were simply in the way. And we mourn as we should. These bodies so much like Christ. Bodies in which God has dwelled. Holy places desecrated. So what might we do? Perhaps the one who was broken and spilled out for us asks only that we also be broken. That we offer our broken selves to God and say, where might I be poured? Where might you flow through me? Where in my brokenness might I be a window, a crack of light for others to see who God is through me, a clear insight into God's grace and loving care. Broken and spilled out. Amen. Would you join with me in our prayers of intercession? They are responsive prayers, and your response is hear our prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray for our church, our neighbors in need, and the whole world, saying, hear our prayer. On this Palm and Passion Sunday, we come with praise and leave with passion. Help us, O oh God, to be ever attentive to your presence in our midst during Holy Week. Help us to see that the crucifixion we remember on Good Friday is present in small and large ways throughout our communities and our world. Enable us to stand with the crucified among us as we pray to you, O oh God, here our prayer. O oh God, we see so much bloodshed in our world, senseless violence, racialized violence, violence against women, violence against blacks, Asians, immigrants. Help us to be nonviolent resistors of hate and malice and prejudice and enable us to be agents of your love in all that we do. We pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for the elected leadership in our local governments, state legislators, legislatures, Congress, and our president. We pray that they would have the courage to work for the common good of all people of this country, that they would put aside differences in order to serve the greater good. We pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer. O oh God, we continue to pray for those struggling during this pandemic. Help us support those delivering needed aid and vaccines. And let us be witnesses to the benefits of receiving the vaccine ourselves. And help us all take responsibility for every measure that protects us. We pray to you, O oh God. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> we pray for all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As an act of worship, we are invited to give to God the first fruits of those blessings with which God has blessed us. <clears throat> we may return our gifts to God, our time, our talents, our energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. You can give to Trinity Presbyterian Church through our online giving portal or through dropping checks off at our church office. Would you join your hearts with me in prayer? <clears throat> As you write upon our hearts, soften them with your compassion. As you soften them, open us to the needs of those close to us, as well as those in every corner of your world. As you open us to the hurts and heartaches of your children, give us the grace to be as generous with our gifts as you are in blessing us. Take these gifts and use them to share peace, love, grace, and joy with all of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, now we will set aside our palm branches to go and serve at God's side in a broken and fearful world. Now we will pick up our cloaks and follow Jesus wherever he leads. To learn from those the world ignores. To be touched by the grace within them. Now we will sing songs of wonder as we work alongside the Spirit, sustaining the weary with peace and hope. Shalom. Go.